This clip of the Texas Bucket List is brought to you by Spirit of Texas Bank, Slovacek Sausage, Germania Insurance, We Rent It, and RV Source. Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything there is to see, do, and experience right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and finding unique stops is sort of our forte. So when we heard about a museum dedicated to a sport just about everyone has given a go, well, we figured we had the time to spare. So we headed to Arlington, because the dude abides. Big D, home to some sporting greats, like the Cowboys, Rangers, and the Bowlers. Amongst the massive ballparks in Arlington, you'll find another sprawling complex dedicated to a sport that may be the oldest of them all. Bowling goes back 5,000 years, so a lot of what we have is more U.S. focused, but we have an amazing collection here. Jessica Bell is the curator of the International Bowling Museum and Hall of Fame. A lot of what people think of there's a bowling museum, what is that exactly? And then they get here and they see that you don't even have to be a bowler to think this place is great. This story starts back in ancient Egypt, where being buried with your bowling ball was common. I would say that's not maybe necessarily historically 100% accurate, but it really is uh, representing <laughs> the origins of bowling, which date back to um, ancient Egypt, and the archaeologists have uncovered a bowling-type game. <laughs> From there, the game expanded across the continents because bowling is right up everyone's alley. 93 million people per year participate in bowling and that makes it the largest participa participatory sport in the world. Well, this looks old. <laughs> it is very old. This is the oldest piece of our collection. This is a Aubusson tapestry dating back to 1739 and it's a French depiction of what lawn bowling basically looked like back then. And look, they even have a jug of ale. I believe that's what that is, yeah. <laughs> Through time, it has stayed true. Exactly, yes. <laughs> the tale between bowling and beer started in the 50s, when watching these finely tuned athletes bowling to perfection was a sure thing on Saturday. As Prohibition ended, uh, the beer companies started sponsoring bowling teams, and so that's kind of where the association came from in the 1950s, and was when bowling was at its height. So during the 1950s, um, television really took off, and bowling was on television every week on Saturday mornings. They were watching championship bowling, and so people really had like a relationship with some of the bowling stars at that time. Dick Weber, Marion Ludwig, Earl Anthony, and Walter Ray Williams Jr. are names that never get drugged through the gutter. In fact, they're some of the biggest to grace the Hall of Fame that happens to not have any dames in it. Sort of. So this is the hall, but I don't see anybody in here. That's right. We have this amazing digital system because we induct from five different organizations. Sure. So we have over 700 different Hall of Famers. 700? 700. 700 Hall of Famers. So we can't put everybody on the wall. So what we do is we put everybody into this uh, system here and you can pull up individual biographies. And when you click on a person, your favorite Hall of Famer, you can go through their biography, le learn a little bit about their history, and then also um, look at their different pictures or videos if they have videos. Has anybody ever gone through all 700? Um, that would be a good question. I'm not sure that anybody's ever looked through all 700. <laughs> <laughs> this building dedicated to bowling isn't just about the names and the history. It's also about the stories many have not heard. Like during World War II, when the Women's International Bowling Congress raised enough money to purchase not just one bomber, but several planes for the war effort. It goes beyond just bowling. It goes, um, they, it reaches out to all aspects of life. Once you're done reading up on the history and the people, then it's time to get your roll on. Why are your bumpers up? This is unfair. <laughs> this is not fair. Here, I'll get your bumpers. 
Yes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, bumpers. <laughs> oh, no pressure. Uh oh. Yes, strike, Monogon. <laughs> now this is all fun and games, but if you want to bowl with the best, you can do that here too. The International Bowling Campus includes a research and development center where Team USA, bowling professionals from all over the world, and even people who have no idea what they're doing, get into the right frame of mind. We're the highest trained uh, certified coaches in the world. Lou Marquez coaches up all sorts of players to give them the extra into their ordinary. Bowlers generally come to our facility are obviously looking for some kind of advancement in their game. But they're really, you know, sometimes they come here, you know, wanting to get fixed because it's a last ditch effort to get better. So if you have talent to spare or just want to get bowled over with history, the International Bowling Campus in Arlington is like a perfect game. Well worth a stop on the Texas bucket list. If you're on a quest to get better in bowling, you know, this facility exists for the purposes of training your physical body. You know, we're the most highly technologically advanced facility in the world. And, you know, if you're aspiring for the best, this is the location to find it. Bowling has such an interesting kind of niche history and um, kind of interplay with culture that coming to the International Bowling Museum, you get a, a piece of history that you're probably not going to normally think about. 